Hello, everybody. God bless you. It's so good to be here again um, on Facebook Live. Um, we just love you all, and uh, we're going to give it a few minutes. Uh, our, we got some people joining in. Our brother Davey and sister Deborah and Gail, how you doing? Ivana, we love you all. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Um, I'm just giving it a minute before I take off, and uh, uh, we, we just love you guys. I just want to, our Pastor Lee, I love you, Pastor Lee, and uh, Kay and Eddie and Rose. God bless you all. I'm trying to take my time. There's uh, my precious uh, mother-in-law and probably father-in-law. We love you guys. I'm trying to take my time. I, I usually just jump on here and just start firing off, but I'm just going to give everybody a minute to, um, to, to get logged on here. Um, we just love you guys so much. And I got Alicia here with me. I, I know y'all can see her. Um, I got in trouble last uh, uh, week when I done this. Uh, everybody said they want to see Alicia on here with me, and so I made sure that she was on here today. Actually, I believe that was Marla Fonseca that got on to me about that, said they want to see Alicia. So Alicia is here um, with me, and um, and I see Kay King is watching. Um, uh, Kay, tell your kids that we, and I see Heidi, tell them that, that we are definitely not doing a rap song today. <laughs> so, uh, but um, I want to uh, say a few things before we get started. Uh, uh, there's Dakota. Hey, Dakota. Um I want to say a few things uh, before we get started and elaborate on and, and follow up about what Pastor Lee was talking about. Um, we are just so excited to have Brother Keith Linkus uh, with us now at Walton on staff, and uh, I'm just so thankful for that man, um, and uh, he, he's just a, a precious part of our church, and so um, congratulate Keith if you see him or, or run across him on Facebook. And, and we just thank God for Brother Keith, and uh, we love him. Uh, Sunday morning, uh, church at the mall, the NRV mall at 1030. Listen, guys, I want you to pack the place out. Um, if you do not have a home church, I want you to come to the NRV mall Sunday morning. We're going to do our dead level best to pack the mall out, trying to get the, the word out. Um, we want to just... Uh, fill that parking lot plumb full of vehicles more than we've ever had so um, please come please come uh, Sunday morning at the NRV mall there beside Regal Cinemas in the parking lot and we're going to pack that place out I believe God's going to do great great things but um, I want I want to get into the word, and uh, I've said the past few weeks that I wasn't going to be long, and I'm not going to say that now because I'm always long, and uh, so I don't know what God's going to do. Uh, but uh, something that's been on my heart the other morning, I got up, and I had a whole different thing that I was going to uh, a subject, should I say, uh, that I was going to be preaching on tonight, that that I was going to that that what I was feeling, but. But God just uh, spoke something to me when I was uh, leaving the house uh, to go to work the other morning. And, and he gave me a phrase, and this phrase was this. Having done all to stand, stand. And as I went throughout my whole day at work, uh, that phrase just kept going through my, through my mind and in my spirit. Having done all to stand, stand. And as I pondered on that, and as I pondered on that statement, uh, God began to um, quickly uh, move me over on the subject of uh, having unforgiveness or, or, or wanting to forgive somebody. God quickly began to move me to that subject, but with that phrase, having done all to stand, stand. And... Uh, Unforgiveness is um, is a really hard thing to um, deal with at times, and I don't care if um, who you are, how holy you think you are, um, or, or how long you've been in church. Uh, there are times that we get hurt um, in, in so many different ways, and we we 
hoard up all this bitterness and unforgiveness uh, towards people and, and, and different things that people's done. And, and it gets us to a place that we're bitter and, and even hurtful to others and ourself. And, and, and I really want to talk to you about unforgiveness tonight and, and, and different uh, scenarios. And, and it's funny that I'm even talking about this. And, and guys, if you'd only know, and I'm not even going to get into it, the different situations and, and people, let me just say that, the people that God has brought me in contact with this week is amazing. And, and, and can I just be honest and real? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and act like I've just always had it all together and, and, and didn't want to forgive, uh, uh, or just forgave everybody for everything they've ever done. No, I'm not going to say that, but there, I have come across people this week that, that I've had bitterness in my heart for, for quite some time. And the Lord, um, just brought these people back into my life even to the point that I could have a conversation with them and and, and not be bitter and 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 I, I'm just in awe at how God worked that out and 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 actually you all are the first people I've even told this to um, that these people uh, just crossed my path and and I'm going to be honest a few uh, years ago um, probably wouldn't have been uh, such a good meeting as 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 it was here uh, this week but but it's amazing at, at what God can do in our hearts and I want to share and, and say in that 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 statement having done all to stand stand I want to read you a, a very familiar scripture and it's Ephesians chapter 6 and and I'll start with verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to what stand against the wiles of the devil. That you may be able to stand against the devil, guys. Verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, <clears throat> I want to go back. And, and we're talking about at the beginning of this that to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand the devil. And we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Now, I, I just want to stop right here and I want to make something clear. When it comes to unforgiveness that we have towards people that we deal with or, or people that's done things to us, we, we've got to understand, and this is a hard, hard lesson that I've had to learn, um, that, that not, even though these people are saying these things, these people might be, have, have done these things to you, it is a spiritual battle. Um, verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood. You don't wrestle against that person that you're holding unforgiveness towards. But it's against the principalities and against uh, against powers and against the rulers of darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I, I really want to emphasize high places there. Um, you got to understand.
that unforgiveness can bury itself so down deep into your heart and into your spirit, and, and you can get so much bitterness towards somebody for something they said, and, and you hate that person, you despise that person, you, you cannot stand that, that individual for what, what they've done to you. And you've got to realize that it's really not them, but it, it's, a, it's those principalities, those powers of darkness. In, the Bible says in high places that is working against you. I had this one person in my life, and, and, and I mean done, done a lot to me to hurt me, done a lot to, to do things to me. And, and I began to hate that person. I began to um, um, despise that person. I began to just completely be repulsed by that person and, and could not stand them. And every time I was around them, uh, they would even provoke me to even get uh, fleshly, should I say, or in my flesh, and, and, and even act out and say things that I normally wouldn't do. And a lot of you that are probably watching now are going to watch that 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 you've come in contact with these people and you say things and do things or, or feel things or even think things that that are not common for you to think because of the unforgiveness, because of the bitterness that you have in, in your heart towards this person. And you think, how in the world can you forgive? Guys, you can forgive. And I had this person provoking me, doing, doing things to me that was causing me to act out. And I began to realize something, and it took longer than it should. Let me say that. It took a lot longer than it should uh, for me to figure this out. But that spirit that was driving that person, that, that, that principality, that darkness, that, that, that high power the Bible was talking about, was working itself against me and trying to tear me down. So if you're listening to me tonight, and this is just what I'm feeling in my spirit, that you may be uh, looking at a, a fleshly person. You may be looking at, at, at a real person, just like Alicia's beside me. Um, you, you might be dealing with a, a human being that you see every day, and they've done something wrong to you and hurt you and, 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 and just devastated your life, and, and you, you probably have every right and and reason to be upset with them and, and to be disgusted with them. But I want you to understand, you have got to look past the person, look around them and see the devil that's driving them, the devil that's using that person to get to you. And when that devil uses that person to get you, it gets you distracted. It gets you off focus on what God has has got for you to do, and, and and the callings that He has for you to do, and and you get angry, and 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 unforgiveness settles in so hard sometimes that you you can't even think, you can't sleep at night, and it begins to put you in a prison. And it begins to set you down, and it puts you in a place that you can't even function. And, and, and unforgiveness is something that's, that's really real. It's something that, that gets in people that just devastates what you're doing and what God's wanting to do in you. But I, I want to go back to this, into my statement. Having done all to stand and to stand. There are times in your life that you're going to have to... There, there's nothing that you can say that can help you with this unforgiveness. There's nothing that... That that you you just you, you you just feel so down and so hurt and so humiliated that you you just can't do nothing you can't go forward you you don't even feel like you could go backwards. Listen, as we as as Christians, we don't want to go backwards. Where God's brought you from, you don't want to go backwards. Uh, you don't want to sit down, but yet you you want to go forward, but. You can't because of this unforgiveness and, and, and you're caught in this void and, and, and you, you, you know you can't pursue on anymore because you, you, there's something here that we got to deal with. It. And, and we're right here in, in, the, in this place right now with a lot of you. Um, we're dealing with, with this unforgiveness and this is where we have got to stand. That 
I know they're talking about you. I know they're doing horrible things to you. I know that that relationship was bad. I know I know it's awful. Let me tell you something. If there's anybody that's listening on this internet tonight that knows about unforgiveness and about uh, people hurting you, it's me. I know. Guys, I, I can tell you, I, I, I've got the bumper sticker, the t-shirt, been there, done that. I, I know what I'm talking about. And, and, and it, sometimes when you can't even move forward, you got to stand. And let me tell you something. There's nothing that a devil cannot stand more than a Christian. Listen to me. There's nothing that a devil cannot stand more than a Christian. And in, in all the accusations and all the, the, the hurt and all the fake uh, lies that they, they, they've thrown at you and all the stuff that they've said about you and all the, the things, the backstabbing and all these things that these people may have done to you and the hurt that it's caused you and the devils behind that individual provoking them. There's nothing more irritating and unsettling to a devil or any principality or any power that that rises up against you there's nothing more devastating to that devil when you rise up and you put on the whole armor of god and i'm going to get into that in just a second and you begin to just stand and you look past that individual that's doing all those things to you and you look past that and you begin to see a devil that is provoking them. And you begin to see the root cause of the problem. And you get right down and you look at that devil. And even though it hurts, even though it's humiliating, and even though it's just plain out deceitful and it's wrong on the, the most highest level, it, it, it's just wrong. But when you look past that person and you see that devil and you know that that's where it's coming from, and you begin to pray. And you begin to speak against that thing. Listen to me. When, when you realize, and some of you tonight are, are, are realizing this as I'm saying that you, you're looking past the person and you begin to see the devil. Because you wrestle not against the flesh and blood. You're not wrestling against the person that you're looking at. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. And against spiritual wickedness in those high places. We're dealing with some real stuff, guys. But wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. When we're in this, this unforgiveness, this evil time that you're dealing with, this, this issue with this person. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. Guys, the Bible gives us proof in fact here that we can withstand all this unforgiveness all these things that's been said to us withstanding the evil day and having done all to stand it is important that you do all that you can do when you don't know what to say you you, you don't even know how to proceed forward that you get up Begin to put on the whole armor of God and done all that you can to stand. Look past the flesh. Look at the devil. And now we got a target to work for. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of what peace? Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, all the things that they're telling you, and to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in what? In the Spirit. Spirit is what the Bible says. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all per perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now that's a load right there. That's a load. I'm telling you, that's a load. When, when, when you're dealing with unforgiveness and when you're dealing with the hurt and, and, and you begin to, to gird up your loins, you begin to put on the breastplate 
of righteousness and 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 you you hold up the shield and 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 you've got your feet shod and and, and you you you're ready to go and and what we're doing here in the spirit guys is we're preparing ourselves for battle we're preparing ourselves to go forward let me tell you something just because you're in a place of unforgiveness right now and you just don't think that you could ever 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 seem to forgive that person for all the things that they've done Let me tell you something. I've got a promise for you right here that I just read that the Bible says that you can withstand the wiles of the devil. You can make it. You're going to get through this. Guys, we're going to get through this because we're not going to lay down and just let this world run us over. We're going to stand. And there's, like I said before, there's nothing more unsettling to a devil is when you, when he's done everything that he can do to you to knock you down, to put you down. When he, when he's had every church person say something to you, when he's had the people closest to you to do something to you, when, when he's, when he's had all this come against you and he's expected you to fall by now, and you may have fallen, but hey, you're getting back up and, and you're starting to put the armor on. You, you're holding up the shield and you're saying, Devil, I realize that it's not that person, but it's you. But that it's you. I, I got to share this story. I, I, I just got to. Uh, it's just it's just my life and things that I, I have um related to and uh, when I was in my accident and and I was waking up and this is really the truth this is this is the God's honest truth Um, when I was waking up I knew that 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 as I was waking up that that I had possibly died or was hurt or could die I knew I was in, in in a bad shape and as I was waking up, God began to convict me. As I was coming to, God began to convict me about hatred that I had in my heart uh, towards an individual. And, and I was uh, angry. Matter of fact, it was more than one individual. I was just angry at a, at a group of people. And, and as I was waking up, I opened my eyes up real slow because I was afraid that I might wake up in hell because of the unforgiveness that was in my heart. Let me tell you something, guys. Uh, when when you're when you're at that point, when uh, when when it comes down to the wire, when, when it's either heaven or hell, and, and you think that you you might slip out of this world and go into eternity to a place called hell where there's forever torment because of unforgiveness and because of sin that you're holding in your heart. Let me tell you something. that Whatever that person said, whatever they done, does not matter at that point. It, it simply, I can't say that enough, it does not matter at that point. Because God wants us to love and forgive. But Brother Paul, how in the world can I forgive somebody that's done so horribly to me? Somebody that has done so many things to me. How in the world can I forgive that person? Let's go over a few um, scenarios. You might have been in a relationship, uh, uh, boyfriend or girlfriend, and they... They, they cheated on you and, and hurt you real bad and, and, and left you, and that, that left you with some, some bitterness and some hurt. You may have been in a relationship or a marriage. Let me, let me just say this, a marriage, and, and that person left you and done horrible things to you, and, 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 and that, that brings up bitterness and, and unforgiveness into your heart um, in a way that, that nobody else had. You may have had friends... Um, a close relationship with friends and they done something horrible to you and, and and ripped your heart clean out and 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 just wooed you in and, and then ripped your heart out and crushed it into a million pieces uh, that that that's horrible they have people somebody may have went around and said horrible things about you made up fake lies uh, uh, 
and different things about you and not just just simple lies, but I'm talking about detrimental things to try to ruin your reputation. Uh, here, here's one that, that, that most likely affects a lot of people is, is family members coming against each other and family members may have have done things to you to hurt you and have said things to you. And, and we say, well, well, these people should be the last people on the earth that t- to do these things to me. Guys, the, the people that I have held unforgiveness in my heart for is, is for people that were close to me, people that, that, that was not supposed to do these things to me, and, and yet it still happened. And, and, and here we are with all this unforgiveness and all this hurt and bitterness and, and it begins to tear you down and leave you at a place to where you're just almost at a useless state. It could be a parent that has done things to you. It, it could be a number of things, a co-worker, people that you are close with that has just ripped your heart out and crushed you. And you're saying, Brother Paul, I'm supposed to love that person that has done this to me. How can I do that? Well, can I be honest with you? Us in our flesh. Us in our our normal bodies, in our, in our, our normal fleshly mind. We are not always good enough people. Can I put it like that? We are not always good enough people that can just flip on a switch and say, yep, I don't care how bad you did me, I, I just forgive you. No. I, hey, you may be that good, but I'm not, I'm not that good. And some of the things that people said against me, it hurts, it, it just, it, it's devastated me. But, This scripture says that we we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual world, against the the devil. And when we get into that portion, as we as Christians, there is a God behind us that gives us power to overcome this forgiveness. He he gives us grace, just like He gives grace uh, on us to forgive our sins. He can give you grace and to help you have grace to forgive those people that has done these things to you. I want to to read something to you. And uh, uh, I I came across this verse, and and I love it. Matthew chapter uh, 5, verse 44. And this is Jesus talking. It's red letter here. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. I'm going to say that again. But I say unto you, this is Jesus, he's talking now. This is the word straight from the mouth of God. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and what persecute you. For if you love them which love you, what reward do you have? And the Bible says, do not even the publicans do the same. It's easy to love people that love you. But let me say something here. If you really want to experience God on another level. And I'm, I'm, I'm going out here with this. If you really want to experience God on a, on a higher level, is when you can begin to love somebody through a God that loved you. Listen, when you can begin to love somebody that's hurt you because a God that forgives you of your sin. Listen, it takes your relationship with God to a whole, whole nother level. I'm talking a whole nother level. 
I say this, and and I don't have all the the answers. Um, the answer to everything is Jesus. I'll put I'll say that, but I, I guess I do have all the answers, uh, and and that that answer is Jesus. But today, guys, I walked into a room with people. Um that I haven't heard from in a long time. And just a little while ago, and I'm, I'm just telling you my story, I, I, I'm just telling you from the heart, uh, I'm not perfect, but I walked into a room with these people today, and it was a, a, a I was invited there, it, it was all good. And when I, when I pulled up into the parking lot to where I, to go meet with these people that invited me to to help them do something today. Um, when I pulled up into the parking lot and I began to to walk into the building, I was amazed that that I could even be there. Because listen to me, just a few a couple years ago, um, that wouldn't have happened that way. I wouldn't have reacted that way. I wouldn't have a talked that way and and I walked in and when I seen these particular people and of course the devil said don't you remember they did this to don't you remember they did this and they did that and and, and the devil's just throwing all this at me but through the grace of God having done all to stand, everything, even when, when it hurt before, even when it was bad, even when it was rough, um, and when they were saying all the, the things, that statement that the Lord, having done all to stand, stand, having done all that, and being able to look at these people when the today, look at these people when the devil's telling me this, Oh, right here's your chance. This is what you've been waiting for. You can just speak your mind right now. I said, no. I said, no, I choose to forgive because there's a God in heaven who forgave me. And there's a God in heaven that forgave you all that's listening right now. And it takes love, true love, to a whole nother level when you can forgive people because of this God. He gives you the grace. He gives you the love. And when I was in battle, went back a couple years ago and going through all those things and people saying things and, 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 and even myself falling and saying things that I shouldn't, when you, when you can't do nothing and you don't know what to do and, and a lot of you are listening tonight and you don't know how to deal with this unforgiveness, Put on the whole armor of God. Let me, let me just simplify it down for you. Do everything you know to do to be right and to get close to God. Oh, you're going to fall, you're going to mess up, but do everything that you know to do and get yourself right and stand and look past the person that you're angry at. Look past the person that's talking about you. Look past the person that's doing things to you. Look past that family member. Look past uh, that ex. Look past uh, uh, the, those friends that have said things to you. Look past that church person, that, that preacher, that, 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 that whoever it is, that, that person that you work with, that boss. Look past those people, and look at that devil, look at that, that, that enemy, that spirit that is provoking them people to say those things. And say, devil, I'm not going to live like this any longer because God has, like that verse I said the other day, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That devil. And greater is he that's living in you that's trying to persecute you and tell you that that you're not good enough, that that what that person's did to you forever scarred you. And yeah, I know it was bad, but hey, tonight we 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 pushing that past. Let me tell you something. We pushing past that and we we going somewhere because God's forgiven you. And you've got to forgive. He said, love your enemies. Love your enemy. And that's a hard, listen, that's a hard thing to do. 
But when you can get to that place and, 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 and you get to, when, when you stand up, there, there's a power that comes from heaven, guys. Listen, I know we cannot do it on our own. But there's a God in heaven that can give us the grace and the love and the power that, that's more than who we are. And it begins to saturate. When you get around Jesus and when you begin to put on the whole armor of God and when you stand and you do everything that you know possibly to do to be right with the Lord and you stand, even though the devil's attacking you from every side, the Bible says to hold up the shield and that you may be able to quench the fiery darts. You have the power to withstand. You have the power to, to quench those fiery darts. You, you have that. Th th that power comes on you and you can stand again and find a love for them. And the, the guys that takes this whole Jesus thing to a whole nother level, when you can find it in your heart to care and love for somebody that's done you wrong. That's done you wrong. Um, we're going to do a little altar call here right now. And um, if I know anything, it's hard to forgive. It's hard to forgive. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's hard to forgive these people. It's hard. But see, there's a devil that's provoking them. And that devil knows that that person can get to you quicker. And that's why he's using that person. And that's why you got to have some grace, guys. That's why you got to have some grace. I'm preaching to me too. I'm preaching to me too. you got to have some grace because he's using that person to provoke you because he knows it'll work. But it's time to shut the devil down. It makes him sick when you get up off the ground and you stand in there and say, Devil, I'm not giving up. This is not how life's going to be, but I'm going to keep going. Listen, if you're uh, watching this and I'm going to pray for you and you're dealing with unforgiveness in your heart, I just want you to take your hand and put it over your chest and put it over your heart. And as I pray for you right now, I just want you to hold your hand there. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, God. God, ain't none of us perfect. God, ain't none of us arrived right now, God. But God, we, we're coming to you with all this hurt and all this pain, God. God, we want to find us a place, God, that we can, God, do all and stand, God, against the devil, God, to withstand what he's trying to put on us, to, to put this bitterness in us and say that, that life can't be any more than what it is. But God, we speak life to this situation. God, we, we break down these spiritual prison walls that's in our lives right now, God, and we move for it. God, we choose to advance. Oh, we're not staying here anymore. Oh, we're not staying here anymore. But we, we choose to be overcomers, Lord. And, and God, we speak to that devil. God, we speak to that devil that's on that person that's, uh, that's driving all this hatred. God, that's driving all this unforgiveness. And, and devil, we serve notice on you. And we command you to leave right now in the name of Jesus. We command you to back up uh, and go back to the pits of hell from which you came. Because there will be your end. There will be your end. Because grace... And mercy, only a godly grace and mercy shall show itself right now. Oh God, we may not even have the strength to even take another step, but God, we're going to stand. Oh, we're going to stand. Yes, I know that they've done bad things, but I choose to stand. Oh, I know they've hurt, but I choose to stand. I know that that thing they said wasn't supposed to be talked about, but it hurt. But devil, we serve notice on you. I choose grace. We choose grace because there's a God in heaven that has forgiven us. 
and we forgive them. Amen. If you're watching me tonight and you're not saved, you, you don't know Jesus, maybe you've walked away from God, I want you to, to, to text in, uh, message us and say, save me. That lets us know that, that, you, that you've accepted Jesus into your heart. But, but I want, I, want to, 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 I, I do this every service just about that I preach and on Facebook. But I want to give you an opportunity to ask Jesus into your heart. And I want you to repeat after me. And I'm going to ask Alicia to repeat after me. And, and you guys, you, you say it with Alicia. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Save my soul. Wash me with your precious blood. God, you've forgiven me. And I forgive others. I give you my life. I give you my soul. I give you my heart. I give you everything. I'm yours. And you are mine. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer tonight, you saved. Message in and, and let us know that you got saved. But this song, uh, when we've done all to stand and, and, and we stand, when the world says we shouldn't be standing, when, when, when facts say we shouldn't be here, when we've done all that we can do to stand, God's goodness is running after us. And, and I want to, this song is called The Goodness of God. And, and I, I want to start with verse number two. And I want you to listen to this, this song. I love your voice. Talking about Jesus. You have led me through the fire in darkness night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived In the goodness of God Let me tell you something In that unforgiveness And when you begin to forgive There's something There's something about your relationship with God When you begin to live in the goodness of God I feel like some of you are dealing with that unforgiveness and that hurt and that, that deep, dark cell that you've been in. I want you to listen to this verse again. It's talking about Jesus. I love your voice. Oh, thank you, Lord. You have led me through the fire in the darkest of night. In those hurting times, you were close like no other. Oh, I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. Yes, and in this moment I have lived in the goodness of God. Oh, help me this. And all my
the goodness of God when we just don't think we can forgive God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me, even when we don't want it. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me, even when hatred is pulling. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. I didn't know how I could forgive them, but I did. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. God bless you. You don't have it in you to forgive yourself, but with Jesus you can. And I know it's been tough and been bad, but you are able to do it. You're going to be able to withstand. So church, gird up your loins. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Hold up the shield. Put on the helmet. Get your feet ready. And stand up against that devil that's talking about you and talking against you and say, Devil, I choose forgiveness because God has given me the power to forgive. Through Him I can do it. In Jesus' name. Listen, we love you guys. God bless you. God bless you.